This morning, I want to take you back to a news story that made headlines around the world. It was this month, back in 2014. The terrorist group Boko Haram broke into a boarding school, kidnapped nearly 300 girls, forced them to be child brides, ripped them from the life they knew. And for our next guest, when she hears of a taking, she thinks of the taken. Melissa Fung is a veteran journalist who survived being kidnapped by supporters uh, of the Taliban in Afghanistan. She is now sharing the stories of some of those stolen Boko Haram girls, mm -hmm. the ones who were able to make it back, and the stories of the ones who did not. Melissa Fung is joining us in studio. Great to have you here. Thank you so much for having me. You open the book with a woman called Mama Boko Haram, and she gives a context into how Boko Haram formed, uh, how she met these young boys who would ultimately form this group, and what was she seeing in those early days? She saw a charismatic leader named Muhammad Yusuf, who really had captured the attention of these boys. She called her sons. They were mm. just neighborhood boys, maybe not who had dropped out of school, not working, and sort of hanging around. And they were really um, enraptured by this young charismatic preacher. And so she could see that they were, you know, starting to follow him and mm -hmm. he was becoming more radical in his interpretation of, of Islam. And so she worried from a very um, early, you know, at very early age that this was going to be a problem. And she tried to warn people, and then we know what happened next in the telling of this story. You gain the trust of a handful of young girls who survived being kidnapped, being married off to soldiers, uh, and they were willing to share their stories with you, which is incredible. Man, I remember those pictures. I remember the hashtag, bring back our girls. What was like life for them after they were taken? Well, after they were taken, some of them are still missing. And, you know, the hashtag, bring back our girls, referred to the she bought kidnapping mm -hmm. in 2014 that you mentioned, yeah. the 276 76, girls. Yeah. The girls that I decided to profile were not part of that group because, you know, in reality, Boko Haram had been doing this for years before and years after that incident. So there are thousands of girls who were taken and many still missing. Um, and, uh, you know, those who managed to escape or those who've been rescued, they go back to their villages and they are seen as the wives of Boko Haram. And so they're shunned by their own communities and life after captivity is sometimes harder um, for them than life in captivity. So where do they go and what do they do? They, now I was able to um, visit a village where a group of women who had escaped the forest together um, started a community of their own when their own villages really didn't accept them. And so um, they are living there together. They are supporting each other um, and, and just trying to get on with their lives. The, the resilience of these women is just outstanding. It is incredible to see. Uh, there's another character in your book that I find fascinating, fascinating and uh, her, she, she tells a story about surviving in the, in the forest and what life was like for them to, to go through the forest, hide in the forest. Uh, tell us more about her. Are you, um, was this, which girl oh, was Aisha this? The, Aisha the Huntress. Aisha the Huntress. Yes. Hunter, Huntress. Um, she's a fascinating character because she leads a group of hunters. Um, and the, the traditional hunters, they were hunting animals. Um, and she followed in the footsteps of her father, who was a great hunter. At some point, um, the Nigerian government called on these hunting groups to help them with um, the insurgency, help them locate some missing girls, help them arrest um, Boko Haram by going to the forest. And so Aisha, um, this woman, leads this group of male hunters into the forest to rescue women. And, and she really sees that as sort of taking the power back from Boko Haram. It's not an easy read, Melissa. It is, it is a story of survivors, and you know, you're able to get them to share just these stories. But where do you see hope? I think I see hope in the fact that they are trying to rebuild their lives, that each of the girls that I profile ha has, you know, they've struggled to rebuild, but they are still putting one foot in front of the other. And now, you know, one of the girls, Zara, has 
brought back a child um, that she had with her Boko Haram husband. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, she's got the... Aisha's going to school. She's seven years old now. And so, you know, Zara's hope now, she's... The school is over for her. She never went back. But she's putting those dreams and those hopes that she had into her young daughter. It's an incredible story, and many stories included. Melissa, great to have you in studio. Thanks for coming on today. Thank you so much for having me. A reminder that the book is called Between Good and Evil. Hey, thanks for watching. If you liked this, be sure to subscribe here, or you can check out more Your Morning videos right here.